Today I'm gonna to show you three features that I really like in Nuxt. And this is one of the reasons that I use Nuxt almost anytime I create a new view app, I always use Nuxt because there's so many like little features in Nuxt that just makes things so much easier to use. Uh, so let me know if you use these features. Let me know what features you like to use in Nuxt. I have a brand new Nuxt app here and in the server folder, I created an API route and I have this new hello TS file. And all this does is it's a git route and it's just gonna return the date under this object, this time.now. Now, if I've used other frameworks in the past, what I usually do is create an interface. So I might create an interface called time backend, something like this. And then I'd have to put in time, it's type string. And this becomes quickly out of date because the backend is constantly changing. So sometimes I get a swagger file. Sometimes I just get some information on what the backend is gonna return to me. And every company I've been at, it's been a little bit different. Some people use GraphQL, which is a whole different paradigm. It, one thing really nice about Nuxt is that you get this automatic kind of end-to-end -end type safety with it. So let me show you an example. So, so first I'm gonna use use fetch. If you don't know, use fetch is pretty much the way you want to handle talking to your backend. There's a few other things like dollar sign fetch or use async data, but I think most instances you want to use use fetch. So I'm going to copy and paste in here. I need to change the URL. I'm going to put slash API slash hello. And right here, this obviously is wrong. I don't have a title. So this option allows us, allows me if it returns an object to just grab one part of the object. So if I use my autocomplete, you can see I already see time in here. It already detects what my backend is. And if I come down here, I can do data.value.time. It's already typed for me. And so this becomes so fun and easy to use because now I have this typed data and I can have this really complicated backend that can return this uh, really complicated object and the backend can change at any time. And I always have the correct information when I retrieve it using use fetch. One thing too that I like to do is when I'm using use fetch is it has a lot of really nice utility functions here. One is refresh. So let's say uh, I'm going to rename this data to, I don't know, time. And if I show the time here and I go back to my app, you see here it is. I have time.time. .time. So we go time.time. .time. Here it is. It's, and if I refresh the page, it changes. But let's say I wanted to add in a button. Let's add a button real quick. I'm gonna add a refresh and I'm gonna have a click handler on it. And all it's gonna do is call this refresh function. Right away from use fetch, I have all these really nice utilities. Like I can refresh the data. I have something to grab any errors. I can see if it's pending. So if I add this refresh here, now when I hit it, it's doing a call to the back end every time I hit refresh. Use fetch is really, really useful. By the way, never, never, ever put use fetch inside a function inside your script setup. It always needs to be kind of in this root part of the script setup. If you do, you're gonna have some really weird issues. That's a really common issue. By the way, I'm gonna give a shout out to Alexander Lichter. He has a really cool YouTube channel where he talks about a lot of Nux things. And he did a whole video on, on how you're using fetch wrong because <laughs> a lot of people make that mistake. So always use, uh, use fetch in the root and then you can also set up use fetch so it doesn't automatically run right away and then you can have it call call it directly from a function so in that case if you didn't want it to run right away you call immediate and you put this to false and then it won't call right away and then you can call it yourself so in this case when I hit refresh it's actually calling it for the first time. Also, if you are using use fetch, I would highly recommend to, to get familiar with unjs and the h3. A lot of the utility functions in, in Nux that deal with HTTP use uh, h3 under the hood. And so kind of seeing how h3 works will be very handy for you and how unjs works as well. So another really useful feature that I use all the time in Nux is their auto imports. So let me show you how that works. So let's assume that I wanna create a new component called my comp. So I'm gonna create, uh, I'm using this plug called advanced new file. I'm gonna create a new folder called components. And inside there, I'm gonna create my comp.view. I'm gonna use another plugin that I have, or extension that I have just to create this real quickly. I'm, I'm gonna do hello from my comp. And then if I wanna use that in here, there's actually, I actually don't need to do any imports in. I can just type in my comp, self close it, I go back to my app, hello from my comp. So it's already there for me to use. And that's just, a, those little niceties makes programming in Nux just that much quicker. Also, if you have kind of a directory structure, so let's imagine that, 
Okay, I'm over here. I have this components folder. I want to have a base folder. So in my uh, components folder, I'm gonna create a base folder. And then in the base folder, I'm gonna create another uh, component called other.view. And in this other.view, I'm just gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna go hello, hello from other.view. And if I go to index.view, instead of Im importing in my comp, I import in base other. And here it is. So now I have uh, hello from other.view. So you can have this directory structure, still take all your components, group them in some way, but be able to still do the auto imports. And it doesn't just only do the components folder, it also does the composables folder and utils folder. So if you're using composable utils, you can do auto imports. And it also imports in views normal imports. So instead of having to import in uh, ref, you can just use it right out of the box. Const counter equals ref zero. And then let's say instead of this button doing the refresh, I'm going to have it do counter plus plus. And then I'll show the counter down here. And you can see here now it's uh, my refresh button is now incrementing the counter. Something that not a lot of people use too with auto imports is that you can import in third party libraries and have those auto imported into. You just have to go into your Nux config, add in the import presets and add them in. So in this case, like view eight I 18 N would be imported in this way, which is really awesome. And the last thing kind of goes along with this that I think that if you're using Nux, you should be use, should be, you should be looking at is the Nux modules. The Nux modules is uh, large. There is, I want to say hundreds of different modules. I could be wrong but there is a lot of different modules. Of course, we've seen Tailwind CSS, Nux module used a lot on this channel. Uh, that one is a really simple one to install. Almost all of them are really simple. All you do uh, to install it is you do the npm install or pnpm or yarn or bun install, whatever it, whatever the module name is, and then you just add it into to modules. And by the way, when you import most of these modules in, you'll get the auto uh, import too, so you won't have to import it in the script setup if it is something that's like a component. So this makes it really slick and extensible to add in all sorts of features into your Nuxt app. They had this with Nux 2. I think they've been really building on Nux 3 too. So some of my favorite ones is Tailwind CSS, the i18n, view use. By the way, be careful if you're using view use if you don't use the Nux module because they do have some of the same named imports and you don't want to accidentally use the view use version of let's say use fetch you really want to use the nuxt version of it so you want to install the module if you do that uh, pinya is another one yeah so you have uh, es linting we've talked about that before on this channel uno css we've talked about uh, on this channel vtest uh, i have i need to do another uh, video on vtest let me know if you want me to uh, nuxt ui we just did a video on that so yeah i would highly recommend if you're using nuxt to use this Nux modules to install your imports first. Check Nux modules first before you install any third-party libraries because these are literally made for Nux. So yeah, those are the three things uh, that I'm really excited about. The kind of end-to-end type safety that you get with using usefetch and the API routes, usefetch itself and how, you, how great it is, the automatic imports, the modules. Uh, I love it all. Let me know in the description, let me know in the comments below what your guys' favorite features are in Nuxt. If you guys like videos like this, I'll do more of them. I love teaching like little things, uh, important things like this. It's, it's awesome. Thanks. Oh yeah. And I want to give a quick shout out. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, I want to thank you. You are amazing. Uh, I have a couple of things in the description you may want to check out. I have a newsletter. So if you sign up for the newsletter, I try to send those out every week or two to let people know of new stuff I've just created any like fun things I find online. Sometimes I even uh, sell courses, but it's been a long time since I've done that. But if you want, check out that uh, sign up for my mailing list. I appreciate it. Thanks.